Hey guys, Furum here, and today I'm going to be testing the Lamborghini Cyan in multiplayer in Asphalt 9 at Golden Max in its multiplayer season. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already, and enjoy the video. So this car's multiplayer season came out several days ago where everybody could get a free try with this car at completely maxed out, and I got several good races throughout the course of that time. Now, I would have made a video about this car earlier, except that I could only play three races every six hours because I have not bought any Legend Pass or things like that. But here you go. Now, I've got a good bit to say about this car. It is a mid-tier S-Class car by most regards, possibly higher in multiplayer, but I'll talk about that a little bit after I tell you about some of its stats. So, it is one of those more agility-oriented cars. It has good drifting, as you could see right there. The nitro efficiency is very good. The handling is good. I mean, the acceleration is quite good. The only thing really kind of not so amazing about it is its top speed, which is still faster than all A and B class cars. If you use Perfect Nitro, where you can go 244 miles per hour, but if you're in Shockwave or Single Nitro or the Double Tap Nitro, you will only be going 238. That's like a 10 kilometers per hour decrease. So most people have figured this out at this point, but it is definitely one thing to keep in mind when driving this car, especially if you've been driving in a bunch of other cars, it can be easy to forget. I speak from experience. Now, I won't be showing the race details at the end of the races from now on because, well, everybody's in the exact same car. So what else is interesting about this car? Well, people have noticed that it has some issues a little bit like that of the Veneno, for example, where it isn't the most stable car. I personally haven't had as many issues with this car as with the Veneno, but I know some people who have, so I wanted to bring that up. My main issue with this car, and I don't know if this is just me imagining things or my bad luck, but it seems very susceptible to knockdowns in this season. Like, after recording all of these races, I did some more after finishing editing, and I was just getting knocked down in so many of them, and I have no idea why it was happening, because it wasn't earlier on in the season when I was recording for this video. Kind of strange, um, probably just my bad luck, but hey, it's a thing. Later on in this video, we have a very close dual race between me and one of the best players on Asphalt 9 Windows, so stay tuned for that. Now, we are in the final race round of the final rounds in the Yesco special event. Currently, I'm sitting at 5th position at 200 points. The 4th place guy is at 205. Neither of us have done a race in this final round yet. Now, the top 3 people have. The thing is, the person in 3rd place has 230 points, so if I'm able to get at least 30 points or so, I'll probably at least get 4th position. Now, I might get 3rd if I'm able to beat the one in 3rd place, but we will have to see how that goes. I'm certainly hoping hoping that I can get top three. If I don't, it won't be the end of the world, but it would be nice after spending all those 24,000 tokens on the car. This race here was very close all the way throughout it, with this guy on my tail the entire race, and he just about caught up to me right here. I was afraid he was going to 360 or something and knock me down. Thankfully, he didn't. We were able to continue to pull ahead with perfect nitro. I'm so glad that this car has good nitro efficiency. Otherwise, this thing with its perfect nitro being faster would be kind of annoying in some cases. But given the car's good nitro efficiency, it's really not that big of a deal, and I don't actually tend to notice it a whole lot of the time. I mean, this car's perfect nitro is longer than a lot of cars' single nitro. So we jump over the final ramp in this race to come in first place. Now, one thing I'm interested to see is once people are able to get this car at max, I'm not expecting its special event to be particularly easy, so I doubt that will happen to many people anytime soon soon. Once we do, I'm just curious to see how it will fare in multiplayer against other maxed S-Class cars. And honestly, even at lower stars, I'm curious as well. But Future Flash made a video recently about the Cyan versus the Batista at max, and the Cyan was able to beat it. Now, this kind of makes sense since it is a bit of a faster car, and it drifts and handles better too, but the Batista was one that actually is overall better than the Fenner and the Zenvo in multiplayer. So I bet that this car will be a very, very good car for multiplayer, 
and honestly quite likely to compete with the likes of the Regera and the Tryon on a lot of tracks. Of course, extremely skilled players will be able to do better with those cars than this one in multiplayer, I'd say, just because they're able to keep up its speed so well, but for a lot of people, this one here is going to be a very, very good car for multiplayer. Now here, he has a bit of a mess up at the last second, and we managed to pass him. Thankfully, he doesn't knock us down when we go over that ramp, and we come in first, but just barely. In that race, we've reached 1400 rating, or Elite League. Now, because Elite League has a lot less players than Pro League due to being a higher tier, my next few races were duels, and honestly, most of the races that I played once I got to Elite League were either two or three, or possibly even four or five players on very rare occasions, but usually two or three. And these were actually some of the closest races that I had during all of the season. You'll see in this one, and you'll see in the next few as well, because it's just you and one other person. It's really intense, especially if it's a close one. Now, I have made one video, I think, a while back that had all dual races in the one dual season that we ever got. At least, I think it was with the only one. It was with the Camaro ZL1, so if you want to see some good underdog dual races, go check that one out. But if you want to see some races with equal car and very close to equal skill, honestly, check out these next few races right here, because we come up to the finish line just very close ahead of him. Now, the next race is the one against one of the best players in Asphalt 9, Afik, on one of uh, kind of my favorite tracks. I don't like it quite as much as Nile River, but overall, I'd say that Cairo is one of my favorite tracks in the game. So we get a little bit behind because we got a little bit higher up at the beginning. It's not so great to go super high on that first jump. You want to go medium high, but I think both of us honestly went a little bit too high there. But then I was right behind him and I was going to see am I going to finally be able to beat him? Because I've faced him a lot of times, but I'm not sure if I've ever actually won. If you're watching this, let me know, because I do not remember. Also, I would like to announce that I plan to upload my next Asphalt Music video at 33,000 subscribers. Currently, we're about 700 away from that, so that'll probably be in three weeks or so, given my current subscriber rate. But of course, you can help speed that up if you would like to see it sooner. It will be my seventh Asphalt song at this point. That's crazy, and 7 is my favorite number, so I'll be sure to try to make it extra special. This will continue my trend of uploading one music video every 6 months, because that's about how long it takes with everything else going on for me to craft a really good one. So we come up to the end of this race here, just a hair behind Afik, but honestly, I'd say that's a pretty good showing. Our next race is another close duel, this one's on Rome against Rivals 48. So we'll give you a little hint to the music video. You know how my third Asphalt 8 video was a list of updates in the game? Well, this one has to do with a listing of something else in Asphalt 9. Not the updates. Let's see if anyone can figure it out. Now, if you do, I'm not going to tell you in the comments, but I'm just curious to see how many people are actually going to guess it. And if you guess it, well, you'll know if you were right when the video releases. So I uploaded my video about the Max McLaren P1 a few days ago, which was one that had been quite requested for a while, but it did better than even I was expecting because I thought, well, it's an old car and those people asking for it probably aren't the majority, but it seems like a lot of people were quite interested in it. So that definitely gives me motivation to go back to some other, perhaps older cars in the game that I might have not tested at completely maxed yet, which there are a few of coming up, as well as some newer ones, of course. I usually like to try to keep a good variety between older and newer cars and my own races or other people's races if I have to do that. So that there's always something for people who find all sorts of different cars interesting for multiplayer races. Now time for our final race in which I will give my general review about this car. It is a very good car. I'm definitely going to try to win it in whatever kind of event it comes in, which should come, honestly, probably not long after the Yesco event. We'll have to see, though, because I've only got less than a thousand tokens right now due to spending so much on the Yesco event, which is why I would really like to win it, so all those tokens wouldn't have just gone to waste again. But yeah, the sign is definitely worth trying to pick up if you have any chance at all with it. I think even at one stars or lower stars in general, it will still feel quite nice to drive on honestly probably be pretty good in multiplayer, especially on twistier tracks, which is where it really shines, due to having very good acceleration, nitro efficiency, handling, and drifting, while still not being bad on the top speed. It's a very well-rounded car overall, I would say. Back there was a good example of just how powerful shockwaves can be. I was riding on top of that other
other car for a good second or two while we were both having shockwave. And the instant that he went out of shockwave, I knocked him down just because we were touching each other. Finally, after taking a bit of a lower jump than the guy right behind me, I'm able to round the final bend in first place. I was afraid that I was going to get knocked down at the very last second there, but thankfully I didn't and we take the victory. Thank you all for watching. Please like the video if you have enjoyed and consider subscribing for more asphalt and other games content. And I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.